I'm pleased to have with me now Dr. Surya Prakash. He is on the faculty here at the University of Southern California. He's a chemistry professor. Surya, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. And most importantly, thank you for putting together this conference. Tell me, how did it come about? And myself and my colleague, uh, Professor George Ola, uh, are working on what is called a methanol economy concept, where methanol can be made by recycling CO2 with energy. And uh, since we had written a book on this topic several years ago, this got the interest of NSF when we were asked to organize this symposium. What's your ultimate goal for this workshop? What do you hope to accomplish? The ult ultimate goal for this workshop is to you know, talk about what scientists, chemical scientists, can do in this area for the solving you know, this problem in the near term and also towards the long term. There has to be a paradigm shift in adopting some of this technology. And uh, all, already oil is $140 a barrel, and people are realizing you know, that oil is a finite commodity, and it's also leading to a lot of CO2 production, global warming. And I have a feeling that this time around, there will be you know, definitely a shift in adopting some of these technologies. I think uh, you know, the common man in America is already aware of these issues because he's you know, paying attention to his pocketbook. You know, gasoline is selling $4.50. In California, it's almost $5 a gallon. Because of this, already I think a common man is paying attention. And also, we as scientists, I think we should talk at their level so they can understand the problems much better. I think uh, it's not just crying wolf anymore. We have a real problem. And I think the scientists, not only US scientists, but scientists from all over the world will come together in solving these issues. Because what I fervently believe is, Earth does not have an energy problem. We have an energy carrier and distribution problem. We have plenty of alternative energies. Sun, the sun has been the source of all energy, past, present, and the foreseeable future, next four and a half billion years. So we can harness sun's energy and make all these liquid fuels, and mankind would solve this problem. I'm honored to have with us today Dr. George Ola. He's a professor at the University of Southern California and a Nobel Prize winner. Dr. Ola, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Tell me, what is the relationship between the incredible research you did that won you a Nobel Prize and the work in which you're engaged today? Well, you know, scientists, at least in my opinion, are mostly driven by curiosity. Uh, there is something in the human being that we have a drive to understand things, to discover things, and so on. So I was very interested to explore, can we, people, with the means we have in science today, uh, capture and then recycle carbon dioxide? In other words, convert this harmful uh, greenhouse gas into a useful new product like fuels, materials, whatever, uh, is there a possibility for us to regenerate this uh, byproduct of all processes in which carbon-containing compounds combine with oxygen, whether we can recycle it by our own efforts and provide not only an inexhaustible reservoir of raw material for mankind, but also help to overcome the inevitable shortages, say, of oil and gas, eventually coal, and so on. It looks like that some of this chemistry on which we were working for a long while, because of our curiosity and then based on the results, our beliefs that it can be done, now is, is moving into the real life. 